In my career as a web developer, I have a handful of memories of having to rely upon backups when something went terribly wrong on a server. I've dealt with outside incidences, uh, things like DDoS attacks where outside traffic brought a server to its knees, as well as inside <laughs> incidences where myself or other developers just made stupid mistakes causing data loss. Uh, and in those instances, having backups in place was critical. And not only did we have to have backups in place, we had to know how to use them so that when things went wrong, we could get the server back up and running as quickly as possible. As a recent case study, I was working with a bash script that was designed to download logs off of a production server to my local computer and then clear those log files from the server. And within that script, there was some really problematic code when it came to clearing the logs from the server. The code looked like this. It first asked the person running the code if they're sure they want to proceed by clearing the contents of the production logs. And then if they said yes, there was this line that said rm-rf log path. So this is going to recursively and forcefully remove the contents of whatever log path was. Problem was, this log path variable was not defined anywhere else in the script. So when the script was run, it just started deleting everything on the server very quickly. And uh, basically, it ran until it reached some permission denied errors. But at that point, the damage had been done. All of the web content on the server had been deleted. The primary application running on the server was just gone. So all in all, just really sloppy development. Um, this was done in haze. I was very quickly trying to get it done and didn't pay enough attention to it. And in fact, when I had ChatGBT write up this bash code for me, it even warned me. It said, please be very cautious when using rm-rf commands, especially with paths specified by variables, as it can result in the irreversible deletion of data. Ensure that the path is <laughs> accurate and you have a backup or confirmation of the directory you are deleting. All right, so that's a whole other story of just being very careful with scripts like this. but. What happened once everything was deleted, I immediately start thinking, how am I going to restore uh, this situation? And of course, I knew all of my code was backed up in GitHub. I had the core code for the application itself, but that did not include the overall server setup, all of the configurations and processes I had running on the server for this application, uh, the database uh, information, the database content. Um, and as well as user-generated content and media that might have existed on the server. These were all things that needed to be rebuilt in order to bring this application back online. So fortunately, the good news is I did have backups in place and I had them via my server provider. I'm currently using Linode for this application. Uh, it's a relatively small server. I think I spend about 12 bucks a month and it's like $2.50 extra for backups. So using this as an example, let's just dig into the interface. Let's look at the server in question. I'm gonna go down to the backup section. And in their backup system, there are four backups available. There's a daily backup, a weekly backup, a bi-weekly backup, and then you can create up to one manual snapshot at any time. So in this situation, I needed the most recent backup, so I was going to go to the daily backup. And in terms of options of what I could do with this backup, I could either restore it to the existing server, or Linodes as they call them, or I could deploy it on a new server. Now, if I was on a situation where... Let's say my server wasn't completely nuked. It was just kind of hobbled <laughs> where uh, there were issues on it that uh, needed to be fixed. I needed to look at a backup, but I didn't want to necessarily take down the existing server. In that case, I would deploy a new server with the backup and then I could get in, get the files that I needed or do whatever repairs I needed and then uh, potentially either migrate that new server back to the existing server or I could even do a swap where I point the IP address for the site in question over to the new server. In this situation, though, because I had just destroyed everything, there was no harm in just restoring to my existing server. So that was the option I chose. All right, so I clicked that, and then I just had to wait. Uh, I think maybe it took about 20 minutes, 25 minutes total for Linode to do its thing to rebuild a new server uh, with that backup image. And then once it's done, the nice thing was, was it was ready to go. Um, I was able to immediately SSH into that server. Uh, all of the configs that had existed on the server before were still in place. So things like my SSH keys were still there. I was able to authenticate right away. Um, all of my existing cron jobs, the demons that were running on the server, all of that was backed up. And it was really a mirror copy of my server. And as a result, the rebuild process was super simple. And so for that reason, I definitely recommend a server level backup uh, like the one that Linode provides and uh, choosing a server that provides the the user friendliness that they provide in terms of rebuilding from those backups. That was just a really great feature. I highly recommend it. All right, so that was the good news. The bad news was that the backup, while it was relatively recent, it was still about 12 hours old. Backup, I think, had occurred at about 10 p.m. the night before, and I had created the problem, discovered the problem about 10 a.m. the next day. So there was this 12-hour window that was unaccounted for. And the key thing that I lost in that window was just database activity. So any of the interactions from my users to the database in that 12-hour window, it was just gone. Fortunately, though, the application on this server that I was running, it's not a super high traffic application. So there wasn't a lot of activity in that 12-hour window, especially because it was overnight, at least in my time zone. 
Um, and uh, you'll recall that this problem originally occurred because I had a script that was downloading production log files. So before this error occurred, one of the things that had happened was I had downloaded all the log files from the production server. And because I had a copy of those log files, I was able to actually see most of the data that had been missed in the database because it was also being written to log files. It's just the nature of the particular application of doing a lot of logging. So I could go back and look at um, processes and making sure they're running correctly. So I was able to manually uh, fill in that data once things were restored, but that's not always the case. And so one of the things I would do differently moving forward is, well, I think uh, daily backup on the server itself is fine. I think having a more frequent backup for the database is definitely called for. Um, it's just much more a, a dynamic thing on a server that is changing frequently and a backup every 24 hours is not sufficient. The final component I had to think about with my backup was any user generated content, things like file uploads coming from your user. The application in question here does have users uh, uploading data, but fortunately it's all sent to Amazon S3, so it's completely separate from the server. So even though I had destroyed the server, I still had that data there, which I think is a good argument for uh, keeping your eggs in multiple baskets, so to speak. So long story short, there's a lot to think about when it comes to backups, making sure that not just your code, but also things like your server configs, your databases, user-generated content, you wanna make sure all of that's backed up and you wanna make sure it's backed up at an appropriate frequency. And then more than anything, you want to make sure that you understand how to use your backups. You want to understand what services your backup provider offers. Is it as easy as Linode makes it to just set up a new server with that backup? Or is there more hands-on work that you have to do to rebuild? These are all important things to know. And it's a good thing to research when you're not in a moment of panic. So I hope that this video is a gentle prompt to you to spend a little time today looking at your backup system, maybe setting up a backup system if you don't have one, and maybe just doing a little bit of practice to understand what you would do in an emergency.